Good morning, everybody. August the 24th, day 18, 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, good morning, good morning. As you're waking up this morning, um, my wife is the first name to pop up on my screen. Good morning, honey. Um, glad to have so many of you that you continue to be so faithful in it all. Good morning, Mike Lynch. Uh, glad to see you this morning, my friend. Miss Savannah, I hope school is going well. Uh, Jean Haynes, good morning, good morning. Morning, Miss Mary. Um, appreciate you very much. Debbie, good to see you this morning. So um, Preston Wise and the Wise family, uh, good morning to everybody. Glad to have you guys this morning. My wife's got clappy hands because uh, I think her and Misty said that they sit there and try to be the first one to the name that pops up. Uh, anybody else competitive like that? Anyway, good morning. Glad to see you this morning. Uh, good morning, Kermans, Lynn Lynch. Uh, glad to have you guys. So grab your journal. Uh, I'm going to jump in pretty quick today because we got a, a, a major topic to uh, tackle this morning. Uh, man, to walk in here at four o'clock this morning and go, all right, we're going to talk about marriage in a 12 to 15 minute window is an interesting um, um task let's let's just say but uh, uh i want to jump in but before i do let me remind you real quick uh, if you don't have a journal it's on our website codlakes.com um good morning miss hannah good morning ken good morning julie good to see you um but grab the journal and uh, but also i want to say this to you again what does day 22 look like what we've been doing for 18 days now will be done on sunday morning what we've been doing is we've been focusing on the word and then how we serve people. So I want to ask you on day 22, those two questions. On day 22, um, what does it look like? How are you going to interact with the word differently? Uh, how are you going to, what, is, what kind of a reading plan are you going to have? And then how are you going to continue in having a daily focus of serving others? So day 22 uh, is coming up. And I, I want to um, really, really, really push you that this would be a catalyst uh, not just an event that we went through. Okay, day 18, we are praying for married couples. We are praying for married couples. All of our married folks out there, good morning to you. Now, for my singles, don't shut down on me. You're going to want to pay attention to this um, because if you are going into relationship or even think about being married one day, uh, you're going to want to go into it with the right uh, understanding. Now, in your journal, uh, I purposefully put what is probably one of the most controversial scriptures uh, in, in the Bible. It gets talked about a whole lot, and it starts with, Wives, submit to your husbands. And uh, I don't know about you, but I've heard that verse by itself uh, a whole bunch. And boy, does it stir something in all of us. It can stir something very unhealthy in men. It can stir something very unhealthy in Women. So as we're praying for married couples today, and for those who of us are married couples today, let us put this verse in context. Remember when you are reading the Word of God, context is king. Context is king. You cannot just take a verse, pull it out, and just claim it for yourself. You, you have to consider it within the context. So let's consider that entire chapter of Ephesians chapter 5. Now, I don't know if you've ever done this. Uh, but sometimes uh, what my wife has told me she'll do is she'll read a little bit of a first of the beginning of the book and then flip in a little bit of the back of a book just to kind of get a perspective. And so I want to do that from the standpoint of I think Ephesians 5 lays out uh, very, very, very well for us to go and look at verse 32 and 33 at the end first. Before we just read the verse in your journal. So if you got a Bible, you want to pull it up on uh, on the screen for you where, wherever you can. I want you to consider the entire chapter of Ephesians 5. So let's go to 32 and 33 first. Excuse me. This mystery is profound. What mystery? Well, the mystery that he's talking about of marriage. <laughs> that makes me laugh that he just says it's a mystery because for some of us we go on some days we go yeah this is a mystery trying to figure this one out right this mystery is profound and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church so when we start thinking about marriage and when God's word talks about marriage and when we read what we're going to read it all has to be within the context of he is giving he's given us marriage not just to stand alone because it, but it is a metaphor for Jesus and the church, the relationship of Jesus and the church. 
And so it says, verse 33, However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So let me stop there and say, we get something we call the love and respect cycle. If you as a couple have never gone through the teachings on the love and respect cycle, go on right now, media. Take the time to go through it. I promise you, it'll help you immensely in your marriage because wives, women have a tendency to need love and security. That's their base need. Men need respect. That's completely different. So oftentimes men and women, usually when I'm sitting down with a married couple, I, I start with verse 33. Uh, well, I start primarily counseling with verse 33 uh, because ladies, he needs to feel respected. Gentlemen, she needs to feel secure and loved in the process. So it is in that context, right? In verse 32, Paul looks back at his quote and says, this mystery is a profound one. And I'm referring to Christ in the church. Now, why is coming together of a man and a woman to form one flesh in marriage a mystery? Well, again, because he tells us in verse 32, the marriage union is a mystery because its deepest meaning has been partially concealed up until this. But he's saying, but now I'm, I'm putting it out in the open, right? Verse 32, I'm saying that it refers to Christ in the church. So he says, you know, for a, a lot of years prior to the writing of this, uh, we've now understood that it had a connection to the relationship between Jesus and the church. So marriage is a metaphor or an image or a picture or a parable that stands for something more than a man and a woman becoming one flesh. It stands for the relationship between Christ and the church. That's the deepest meaning of marriage. It's meant to be a living drama of how Christ and the church relate to each other. So now let's go back up to the top of the chapter. It starts like this, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators as God, of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. All right, now I'm going to skip down to verse 15. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look carefully then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Let me stop and say this to you. Um, your marriage is really not about you. Your marriage is ab about reflecting Christ. Your marriage is meant to reflect the relationship of Christ and the church to the world. So it's really not about us. It goes on, verse 18, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual sing, uh, songs, singing, and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Now we get to the verse. Come on, y'all, like you got to put it in context. Wives, submit to yourselves, uh, to your own husbands, as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body uh, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with a word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she may be holy and without blemish. So wives submit, but husbands present your wife, like care for her in such a way that you present her unblemished um, in the process. I'm going to say something kind of tough, but uh, it's something we all need to hear. I, I like to say um, you can tell the quality of man by the countenance of his wife. Um, and, and so, men, this is not a, I'm the man, do what I say. Uh, this is, I'm supposed to be the head of the household, but in such a way that I present her uh, in splendor, right? And in the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we're members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become flesh. The primary message here is that marriage, as in all human relationships, the body of Christian believers is to be unified 
with Christ for the purpose of doing God's will. Following that path is not easy, and it requires submission to the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And submission to one another. Um, Jesus' example of leadership was to humble himself and serve. Mark 10 tells us he came to serve and not be served. Philippians 2 tells us that he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but humbled himself uh, to death, even death on a cross. So when we read just this little piece of scripture and we create the animosity, we're coming to a place where, imagine, let me say it to you this way. Your head and your body are functioning in, in unity right now. If they're not, then you're being seen by a doctor. Something's drastically wrong. You, you're in care. And that's that's the idea here, is that, yes, we put, the man plays a role of leading the family, but it is to be in such unity uh, that he presents her unblemished and that she respects him in such a way, and, and it's a reflection of Christ. And so... Man, um, I'm not saying that's easy, uh, but I am saying how quickly we let the enemy come in and bring division. And it becomes about me, mine, and what I get out of the process. So I want to I wanna challenge you today, um, first of all, to our married couples to consider, a am I making it about me? Did I, did I, did, when, did, when did marriage become about me? First of all, it's about Jesus. First of all, the way I treat my spouse is about him. It doesn't matter what they do, how they do. Now, I'm not saying you be a doormat and you take abuse. That's not at all. And you understand what I mean by that. But on a day-to-day -day regular basis, that the, the reality is, is that what I do and how I treat my spouse is a reflection to the world of who my God is. Uh, man, that that's powerful today. And so for the married couples, let me encourage you to pray this morning. Um, God, am I reflecting you in the way I love and serve my spouse? Am I reflecting you in the way I play that role? And then as you pray for married couples today, pray that, that they would see this reality, uh, that their marriage is a reflection of that. For our young people, our singles, um, let, me, let me ask you, as you consider someone and moving towards the idea of marriage, understand what it's supposed to be. Marriage is not about you. Marriage is not about me being completed. You complete me. Thank you, Jerry Maguire. No, 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 no. It's about Jesus. It's about reflecting who he is and his relationship to the body. And when we do it well, we become a living example as a couple of Jesus and his church. So, man, let's take some time this morning. And for whatever that means for you, for some of you, um, that's, that's you praying for your own marriage. That's you reforming your mind today and the way that you look at your marriage and your spouse. For some of you, that's praying for, uh, your adult children that are married and maybe you're struggling a bit or, um, you know, praying for couples that, you know, uh, maybe you've got a friend at work that's struggling in their marriage. Um, let us take some time today and just let the Holy Spirit guide us on our own marriage but the, the reality of, of loving and serving someone else who maybe is struggling a bit in that area. Let me pray for you. Get out of the way and let uh, the Holy Spirit and you have some time today. God, um, I, I personally ask you to help me to serve my wife better for your sake, uh, not for my benefit and not really even for her benefit, uh, but because we need to reflect you to the people around us, that we are to be a living parable of the relationship of you and the church, Jesus. So help us to do that better. Help us to serve one another. Help us to submit to one another. Help us to, to take the attitude of Jesus that says equality with God was not something to be grasped, but he humbled himself. So God, I pray for everybody watching this today. Would you help us to humble ourselves that we've let pride come in and bring division in, in, in our relationships in our home? God, I pray for couples today that are struggling. Jesus, would you love on their heart? Would you, would you help them in their hurt? And would you guide them to people who can turn them towards you in the process? Um, Father, we ask. We ask for a revival in marriage. As so many 
people are getting divorced and so many people are, are battling in that. God, whatever small part we can have in encouraging and serving and loving on some married folks today, would you give us those opportunities and give us the courage to love and serve them as those come? Um, Jesus, we love you. Uh, we ask today that just this day, would you help us in the way that we love and serve those that we have made a vow to, to serve? Would our actions with them today reflect you? And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Um, man, pray for uh, your spouse today. Pray for your own heart today. And go and serve and love and encourage somebody who's married today. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow morning.